U.S. election cycles are stupid. Okay, they're not stupid, but they are annoying. Presidential elections in the United States are so grandiose they're absurd. I want to put U.S. elections in perspective for a minute by comparing them to the U.K. So let's do that right now. 1. In the UK, a candidate may spend about the price of a Kia on their entire election campaign. That's not just advertising, that's everything. Conversely, over here, both candidates spent over a billion dollars last cycle. Second, in the UK, the Labour Party spent 20 million dollars in the 2015 election. The last US election cost the entire GDP of Haiti, the country. Third, the UK has never allowed political advertisements on TV. Fourth, in the UK, all posters must be removed within two weeks after the election. In the US, well, we have bumper stickers. The UK is so quaint with the process, but it makes you wonder, with the circus so large, how can a US citizen not be an informed voter? In fact, how can somebody not vote at all? Well, as you know, I love to use graphs on here, so let's draw what I call the bell curve of knowledge and political activism. This will chart the theoretical knowledge of a person and the probability they will vote. You got God over here, and Gandhi up there. Now, at the start, basically the zero on your axis, your totally uninformed person is not likely to vote. They don't know about the parties, and they positively don't care. They spend their tax return on the lottery. But as you continue on the x-axis, you begin to learn about the political parties and candidates, and start to identify shared value, and the likelihood of you voting rises. For a while, this pattern continues as you learn more. The more you read and hear, the more you care about politics until you reach the apex of political activism right here. That's your annoying local college student or your brother-in-law who always references some obscure conservative website. These guys always vote. Unfortunately, the graph peaks only midway through. When you continue to move along the x-axis, your knowledge increases, but the political activism tends to decrease. Now as you continue learning, cynicism and apathy take over, until you reach the end point, where your knowledge of the parties and candidates makes you completely not care. This is your sister-in-law who read Noam Chomsky after she went to graduate school for gender studies. She thinks either party in power isn't going to make a difference, because both parties are 95% the same and both are paid off by big industries. She forgets we feel the same way, and just don't rant about it on Twitter. But rather than lauding over your knowledge of the political minutia, I think it's healthier to reverse a little bit. To remain what I call a reluctantly informed citizen, right about here. I know it's sacrilege, but sometimes it's helpful not to learn everything about a candidate, particularly if it'll prevent cynicism. Look, I don't vote because I believe in either candidate. I vote on the principle of voting. If you're in the United States or Europe, the candidates are never perfect. Honestly, they generally blow. But it's your duty to vote anyway. That's what it means to be an adult. With rights, also come responsibilities. And it's your responsibility in this stupid world to keep democracy breathing. Because voting isn't just about a candidate. The act of voting is a vote to keep the process of this grand experiment alive in a world that is otherwise savage.